Do you get frustrated when you stand on the scales and you see that they're not moving in the right direction or in the direction you thought they were gonna move in when trying to lose body fat or get in shape? This trips a lot of people up. They stand on the scales and they don't see the body weight going down. That can be very frustrating and it can throw you off track. I'm gonna explain in this video why standing on the scales alone is not an accurate representation of body fat loss. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to track your body fat in order to get an accurate representation of what's actually happening. Are you losing body fat or getting in shape? This is critical, okay, to track your progress so you know for sure if you're moving in the right direction and what you're doing is actually working. So, a lot of different factors can affect the scale weight. Okay, you jump on the scales and let's say you see the body weight's gone up a kilo. Well, this could be down to your carbohydrate intake because when you eat a higher portion of carbohydrates or if you've had a carb-heavy meal the night before, this can show in body weight. Okay, it's not body fat because every gram of glycogen that's stored in the muscle, which is basically carbohydrate that's stored in the muscle, you can get two to four parts water with it. And this is gonna show us weight on the scales. Okay, and talking of water as well, hydration. That plays a massive part in the scale weight. If you're fully hydrated or you've just drank lots of water, you're gonna be a little bit heavier, which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's good, you're hydrated. If you are slightly dehydrated and you haven't drank as much water the day you jump on the scales, the weight might be down. That might trip you up a little bit in your head, thinking you might have lost or gained body fat, and really, it's just water. Our bodies are made up of 70% water. Okay, you need to realize this. It has massive effects on the actual scales. Another big aspect into what moving the scales, either up or down, can be your digestion, the types of food that you're eating, sleep, stress, and salt. All of these aspects on their own can have huge impacts with the number you're looking at on the scales. If you haven't had much sleep, if your stress is high, okay, if the food you've been eating contain more salt, okay, digestion, regularity of digestion, all of these different things contribute to the weight on the scales. And it might just so happen that every day you're getting on the scales, your body is showing a higher weight for any one of those reasons or a combination of all of them, that's gonna make you frustrated. And what happens is people get frustrated, they don't see those short-term results and that can really throw them off track. When really, if they just stayed with it and understood that these different aspects are gonna affect the scales, you could actually be losing body fat and making progress towards your goals. What do I recommend? Well, we can use the scales, okay, but not on their own to measure progress. I would recommend jumping on the scales once per month. That's right, once per month. And you might be thinking, once per month? That's crazy, that's such a long period of time. Well, as you know already, 95% of short-term dieters regain their weight back within 12 months. So, if you wanna be one of the 95%, weigh yourself sooner, get frustrated, go on a short-term diet, and you're guaranteed pretty much to fail within one year. If you want progress and you wanna actually have the body that you can be proud of and lose the weight long-term, you need to have a long-term approach. So I recommend weighing yourself on the scales once per month. Same day, same time. Okay, wake up first thing in the morning, go to the bathroom, get on the scales without any clothes on. Write the number down. Then you're gonna get a tape measure. Okay, so we can use a tape measure. It's a valuable tool for having a look if the body is growing or shrinking. So you can use your arms, your waist, your thighs, okay, shoulders, any way you want on your body, use a tape measure and write down the centimeters that you've got and then every month do that and it's gonna show some changes. The one that I like the most though is taking pictures of yourself, okay? The mirror, all photographs do not lie. But the thing with the mirror is, you're looking at yourself daily, you're not gonna notice those incremental changes daily or weekly, and those changes in body fat percentages. But 
if you take a photo of yourself and in a month's time, same time, day, okay, room, lighting, photo, distance from your body all need to be the same, you're gonna get an accurate before and after. And you put those together, and trust me, if your body is changing after one month, you're gonna see slight changes. When you do this over a period of about three months, which is on average the amount of time it takes for you to see considerable changes in body composition, okay, three months, if you're doing everything right, after three months, that's when people should be coming up to you and saying, hey, what have you been doing? You look great, okay? That's the amount of time that you can get the two pictures together, really look at them and see a lot of change, okay? Gone are the days of standing on the scales daily. Gone are the days of standing on the scales weekly. Gone are the days standing on the scales and getting frustrated with lack of progress. A huge piece of this puzzle is muscle mass, and I need to cover it in this video as well. When you start any exercise and nutrition program, your coach is probably gonna give you more protein than what you're used to. Okay, I know this because the amount of people that I've trained over the years and coached, not one single person has come into my nutrition program already eating an adequate amount of protein. I always had to increase the protein, okay? So you're probably gonna get this as well. What happens when you increase protein intake and at the same time put somebody on a structured, proper training program, okay, muscle mass is going to grow. Your muscle is going to increase and that is going to change the weight on the scale. And there's something called beginner's gains. When you first start resistance training properly, okay, and it, you're on a structured training program that changes over time, you're going to gain above normal amounts of muscle mass, okay? And ladies, don't get scared, okay? You want muscle mass. I'm not talking about looking like a bodybuilder. I'm talking about lean, toned muscle mass that's gonna keep your metabolism running faster and gonna keep you in lower levels of body fat much, 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 much easier long-term, okay? So does that sound like something you want? Yes, it is, so you wanna grow muscle mass helps you stay lean and speed up your metabolism, which is critical for long-term success. So bear that in mind as well, when you start in any kind of nutrition and training program, you will be gaining muscle mass at faster rates than normal, okay? This is a good thing. But to recap, don't stand on the scales and get frustrated with the body weight. It's not on its own an accurate representation of body fat levels, okay? If you're trying to get in shape, you're trying to bring your body fat levels down and you're also trying to build muscle mass for a faster metabolism and long-term low levels of body fat, okay? This can affect the scales. So don't just look on the scales and think that you might not be making progress because you probably are making progress if you're consistent. Weigh yourself on the scales once per month. Use a tape measure around your body to measure if your body is going up or down. And also take pictures once per month so you can put the photos together and have a look at the before and after picture. These are accurate ways of measuring if your body is changing or not. Guys, also I've linked up in the bottom for men and women a carb cycling meal plan. It's a one week meal plan. It's completely free. One is for men, one is for women, and I've also dissected it into different body weight classes to make it a little bit more accurate. In the women's one, I've also put some chocolate because I know women love chocolate and it's not about restricting, okay? Being in shape long-term is not about restricting foods you love to eat, okay? It is about having a long-term mindset and being consistent in your daily habits. That's the only thing that'll get you in shape. No magic pills, no short-term fat loss plans. If you have any questions about that, you can email me at cyrus at thenutritioncamp.com.